When I was younger, I used to think that the more lures I had in my tackle box, the more fish I would catch. And now as I get older and older, I want fewer and fewer lures in my tackle box. Sometimes I get to thinking, what if I boiled it down to just my top 20 lures or 10 or five and really pack light for a backcountry trip? Well, if I absolutely had to pick five, these would be it. Really the decision boils down to three questions. How deep do you want to fish? How quickly do you want to fish your lure? and what size or profile of bait do you want to use. With my five lures, I want to be able to cast, troll, and jig effectively. Without further ado, here is lure number one. A simple jig and a soft plastic. I especially like spin jigs. They have this little spoon tethered on there with a the split ring, and that really gives it a lot of extra life. Your line connects to the jig head on the top, which allows you to jig it or cast it effectively. I really like this particular paddle tail. It's about two inches long, a bit translucent. You can see through it a bit. Uh, and then it's a bit iridescent as well. It's got like a little rainbow pattern to it, kind of like an oil slick. A uh, very natural bait fish looking pattern. Second pick is a spoon. I really like the little Cleo. If I had to pick one, I guess it would be the little Cleo. This is a 2 -fifth ounce, half silver, half green. Color matters so much less than the other three variables you're dealing with, which are speed, depth, and size. I just like green, and some old timer told me at uh, the start of a backcountry trip that this was a really good one, so uh, go on with it. Similar to the first lure, this can be jigged vertically and casted very effectively. The 2 -fifth ounce allows you to bomb it pretty well. Third lure is a lipless crankbait. These things are great because you can cast them really far, they're heavier ones anyway, and they've almost always got a rattle in them nowadays which makes them uh, very easy for fish to detect. I really like these for lake trout in particular in summer or winter. Uh, you just let it fall deep and then rip jig it back to the surface. It's quite effective for lakers. So this is a great lure for jigging and for casting, but what about trolling, which is increasingly a big part of my fishing approach. My fourth pick is a larger minnow bait or jerk bait. Anything of this style will do. It doesn't run very deep, so it's great for shallow trolling. This one is about four inches long. Again, it's got that iridescence to it. It's got that bit of a rainbow, which really mimics a lot of bait fish. And in addition to being great for trolling, I love casting it too. Fifth and final pick is a mid-depth crankbait, something that runs at least 12 feet deep and as much as 20 or even 25 feet. This one's a Berkley Flicker Minnow 9D and it runs about 15 feet. Of course, it depends on how much line you have out and what speed you're trolling at. The important thing with this pick is that it gets me within striking distance of the thermocline and in the summer that can be super important. Not necessarily going to be in the thermocline, but if there's a fish hanging out there, I'm just putting it on a tee for it to come up and smash it. So those are my five and I bet there are a few people out there who are just screaming, what about this lure? Are you crazy? Something like this, an inline spinner. It's tough to make the cut. Uh, I'd love to hear what uh, five you would pick or if you think I have any glaring omissions, what that one would be for you. So let me know your feedback in the comments below.